So if you follow my social media, you probably know that I was in Israel uh, several weeks ago visiting my son, Jake, who's now Yaakov, studying in yeshiva to be a rabbi in Jerusalem. I went with my older son, Zach, uh, and we had the most magical time. If you can ever spend time with your adult children, uh, whatever it costs, whatever you have to do, I t I'm telling you, just do it. I got to spend time with both my boys, um, both amazing young men, you know, and just relish in that relationship that I poured myself into over the last 20 some odd years. Uh, it was really quite magical. Uh, the pictures are all over my social media, so you can see where we went hiking in the Golan Heights and, and up to Tzfat, which is this wonderful hippie, but, uh, you know, uh, Jewish community up on a mountain. Uh, one of my friend, my son, Zach, uh, Jake's uh, favorite places all around the old city, the wall, uh, just, just magical trip. Uh, for part of the trip, though, we went to uh, rabbi's houses for dinner. So we had Sabbath dinner, Sabbath lunch, uh, and I got to meet the really wise and insightful uh, men who are teaching my son. And what I love about this Jewish mysticism, this this sect of Judaism that my my kids have grown up in, is it tracks really, really closely to the spirituality of what I've learned kind of new age kind of buddhist kind of christian kind of jewish like the 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 um non-duality uh bent that i have uh and that I, the truths that i've discovered for myself and for some reason in this ancient jewish tradition uh of kabbalah and mysticism my son is learning a lot of the same things so i feel really uh good steeped in that we were at the rabbi's house on a friday night for dinner and there were several other yeshiva, young, young men from the yeshiva there also. And the rabbi, I love him, uh, he, he has everybody at the table speak. And he has mo his yeshiva students give a talk, give teach a lesson. It doesn't matter what it's about or where it came from, but just bring a lesson to the table. He had his five-year-old do, do, uh, do the Bible verse of that week. And I didn't understand Hebrew, but his five-year-old stood on a chair and was the best public speaker I've ever seen in my entire life. I would listen to that guy do anything. And he was only five years old, emotion, passion. And uh, he remembered every single detail. It was crazy. But there was another kid there. Uh, I call him a kid. You know, he was in his 20s. Uh, and uh, the rabbi said, you know, give us a give us a story, give us a lesson. And the kid who was, uh, you know, shy and quiet, just lit up with fire. And he started to tell the story of the Ark of the Covenant. If you don't know what the Ark of the Covenant is for Jews on Wikipedia here, I'll give you that their uh, their version of it. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, is also the Ark of Testimony or the Ark of God is the most sacred relic for the Israelites. It consists of pure gold covered wooden chest and an elaborate lid called the mercy seat. It is described in the book of Exodus as containing two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. Uh, and uh, according to the New Testament of Hebrews, it also contains Aaron's rod and pot and mana. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a big deal. And if you watch Treasures of the Lost Ark, you know that that's uh, what they were, what they were, what they were looking for. Anyway, so he started describing the story uh, of one of the ancient rabbis uh, from the time of Socrates and how he interprets the ark and how we as humans are like the ark. So the ark is as wood, but on the outside is gold. So the outside of the of this wooden box is pure, beautiful gold. Then there's wood, and then on the inside of the box, there's also gold. He says, how that pertains to us is that we like to show our shiny selves to the, to the world. We get dressed, we, we brush our hair, we brush our teeth, and we put our best foot forward, most of us, and try and show the world the best of us, right? So we show the world our gold as best we can. But then there's another part of us that we all know exists. And that's our self-conscious part. That's the thing that makes us feel like a fraud or imposter syndrome. And that's the wood that's in, you know, underneath the gold. We know our uh, addictions. We know our foibles. We know our shortcomings. We know all the things that seem to be quote unquote wrong with us. And that's the wood. So the gold, uh, what we show to the world covers the wood, the thing we're afraid to show the world. He says, but we usually stop there. And this, this ancient rabbi talks about how we usually stop there and think who we really are is the wood. 
when the truth is, if you dig deeper, if you don't stop there, if you dig even deeper underneath all the things that you know are wrong with you, all the things, the meanness, the, the pettiness, the selfishness, all the things that make you know, a part of being a human person, underneath that is also gold. The center of the Ark of the Covenant is also gold. And that is our connection to God or our oneness with God, uh, your, your Christ self. Um, that is your higher self. That's who you really are. In non-duality, we say uh, who you are has never been born and can never die. This character shows up in the world, but who you are is the oneness, you know, the lilies of the field, right? The birds in the sky, you are the one with the universe. I know this is getting a little off, off into uh, woo-woo land, but, you know, the truth is we are all part of this one living organism called life. So when we look at ourselves and we put that shiny face to the world, and then we feel like an imposter, we feel like a fraud because we know all the things that are, you know, all our warts and all our shortcomings. We always, we often forget that we are actually made of the same thing as stardust, as the sun, as uh, butterflies, as, you know, that life force that's in us is God. And we forget that while we're dealing with, for whatever reason, you know, whatever discipline and whatever reason you think you're on earth and we're incarnate to work on some of these things, underneath it all, we're all children of God. We're all part of God. And I found that so moving because I forgot all that I lived in the wood all the time. So my sneakers were always shiny. My t-shirts were always white. I recycled. I did everything good to hide that wood, that all that stuff. And I never knew I never experientially knew that I was loved, that I was precious uh, until I read a book called Alan Cohen's Relax in the Wealth. Uh, and, he, and he said, you know, he actually in the book, somehow he showed me that I was as precious as my children. Now to me, my children are much more precious than me, but I was someone's child. I was an innocent. Uh, and that's what I wanna to impart to you. You're like the Ark of the Covenant. You do shine in the world. You do have shortcomings. You do have that wood that's underneath the gold. But if you look further underneath that wood, you are exquisite. You are pure love. Yes, you have behaviors that'll go to the contrary. You know, my ADD, and, oh, oh, and I eat too many cookies and all that stuff. But underneath it all, you are a precious, loved, and worthy child of God. So take the Ark of the Covenant as a, as a symbolism. and. Uh, have a great rest of the day because I love you a ton.